Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our look at Associates Program Source Plus. Hope I got those words in the right order. Um, this is the last session in our faculty webinar series. As a reminder, everyone who attends live today will receive a certificate of attendance and the recording will be sent to all registrants. It will also be made available on our YouTube page later today. Um, we are here with Lisa Johns from EBSCO, who's going to uh, walk us through this wonderful database. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. Otherwise, stay muted until the end, and then we will allow time for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded. So Lisa, take it away. OK, let me share my screen, and we'll get started. All right, I'm also keeping an eye on the participants list in case anyone comes in. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining in. We will be looking, taking about 30 minutes or a little bit less um, to look at your resource called Associates Program Source. I'm starting out from your A to Z databases page, and it's right there at the top of the A's. I did use the filter of EBSCO just so I can kind of simplify finding it. Um, and just kind of glancing through here, you can see, and just by the name of it, you can kind of uh, guess that it's before mm -hmm. a lot of the programs, a lot of the two-year programs that you have, a lot of those are more like vocational programs. Um, this resource does include academic journals, magazines, trade journals, and it's using EBSCO host to search. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in and do some sample searches. So I have a couple searches today. I'm going to start out with, uh, let's see, I'll start out with organic food. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my thoughts a little bit. I actually want to do marketing organic food, but instead of typing in all three words, I'm just going to type in two. I want to keep my search as simple as possible. Uh, and let's talk about then what's happening in that search box when you do put something in there. So I'm, even though I know I want it to be organic, you know, marketing organic food, or I want my uh, resources to be about marketing food, uh, I'm just going to leave it like that, marketing organic, and let's see what happens. So the simpler the search term, the better. Uh, and then if you do get too many resources, I have actually 537 resources here, um, then I can kind of start to use my filters or then I can decide if I wanna uh, create a new search term. So marketing organic is my search and I do come up with a lot of resources. Let's talk about what these are. Um, and so in the middle are my articles and that's pretty much what they are, they're articles from journals, magazines, and, and um, trade journals, academic journals. Uh, and there's also book items in here too. So if I look around, I can continue to scroll down and I see in the middle here are all of my journals. Here's the article title. And then if I hover over my item here, this is gonna be where the detailed information is about the article. So I don't have to click into the article to see if it's, uh, going to be helpful for my research. I can actually just hover over and scroll down. I can see the abstract here. Uh, I can also, um, you know, get right here into the PDF record if I do feel that the abstract is uh, going to be helpful for my research, or I can grab the PDF here. So this is going to just open up the PDF link, go right to the full text. Um, no paywalls ever within your system. So if you do ever get any links that then don't get you to where you think they should go or that ask you for you know, money, then definitely talk to your librarians about that because all of these things are already are fully accessible um, from your library. These links work a little differently. The UDC link to full text, they're gonna take you out of this um, interface itself, but they still should take you to the article um, where you can then read the item, okay? So let's continue to scroll down, look a little bit. I have some different access links here. I have a lot of different journals here. Let's look at the filters then here on the side. Um, so the first thing is, is if I do want to pre-filter 
to everything that's full text, then I can do that here. So I wanna make sure that there's no non full text items in here. Um, I can do that also. Maybe I wanna weed out those trade journals, uh, different magazines and so on. And I need it to be more of an academic uh, journal or magazine that I can actually use this one. Um, I'll, I'll demo this one, the cover story one in a minute, but let's continue to go down quickly. If I, anything that's over here, all of these resources over here, like the date here and the source types here and the subject and so on, all of those are very relevant to your current list. So if I see this date here and it says 1989 to 2021, that really means that within this list itself, not just within the database, but within the list, I have something that dates back to 1989 and I have something that's as early, you know, that's right up to date in this year. So if I do want to, uh, you know, maybe get rid of that information from a little bit older, I can actually just use the scroll bar or I can click in the box and then type in uh, my date period. As soon as I start using filters, it gives me an idea and it starts to build my filtering and my search, uh, my, you know, my search strategy here in this box. So let's look at this marketing organic. What it's actually doing is it's using those two words. It's looking near five words of each other in these areas of um, the item. So it's looking in the title of the article. It's looking in the author field, in the source field. It's looking in your date field in case there's something in there. It's definitely looking in your subject field. It's weighing those subjects that are attached to that article a lot heavier than it would weigh um, other items, you know, than it would weigh it if it was somewhere else. And then it's also looking at the abstract. So is it seeing my words within those areas? If it is, then it's putting it on the list. So remember, this is a proximity search and it's near five words of each other in those key areas. And that's why I said, the more words you put up here in this list, all in one box, um, then the, 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 the least amount or you know, the lesser amount of, of items you're actually gonna see on your result list, okay? So that's why I said kind of keep it loose, keep it uh, short, and then start to use your filters here. So let's go down and look at the other filters. I used the date filter um, here. If I did want to look and look at the trade map publications or the academic journals, uh, the subject field is very heavily weighed. So if I wanted to make sure that the items had really had a lot to do with organic farmers or maybe animal welfare, then I could pull some of those in and then further filter my list. The publication field, I'm actually going to, let's see get rid of that date filter and I wanna show you. So the publication field is a great place to look just to get an idea of the broad resources that you're pulling from when you do a search uh, in, you know, in any of the databases. But if I look at the publications, these are actually the titles of the journals and magazines that I'm getting these articles from. So if I see organic farming, Farmers Weekly, uh, natural food merchandising, and as I go through, there's prepared foods and advertising age. So some of these things, um, Marketing Week. So you see a lot of resources that are pulling in and these are, you know, articles are then coming out of these resources and they're on my list. Any questions at all, please put them in chat. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, look at one of these resources. Let's do that. And let's see, I might go ahead and just do another search and then look at one. Let's do that. So if I want to clear everything out, I'm just going to do new search. And let's do another search on sustainable fashion. So sustainability is a really hot topic right now. Um, so I wanna kind of see what are they talking about in here. I should have some really recent articles being written about this topic because like I said, it's super hot right now. Um, so as I scroll down, I did the same kind of search. So I have a lot of resources here. Here's my title of the article, access point. And sometimes I have a choice of the type of article that I, or, you know, of the uh, format of the article. 
So let's look at this and see why I may choose. If I do have a choice, why would I choose one over the other? All right, so let's first go ahead and just jump into the PDF. We know what that is. That is just like I opened up the journal or magazine and, um, and then can read the full journal. So here I am, this looks more academic, doesn't it? So this is actually called the International Journal of Fashion Design, Technology and Education. Remember my search term was sustainable fashion. And my article is here and I have the full view of it here. It's, uh, you know, 10 pages long. So what can I do here besides reading it online? I can definitely save it up to a uh, Google Drive if I have one. I can also just print it off if I need to do that. Share it so I can email it to myself or to others. If I wanted to share this when I do email it, I'm emailing it and taking it out of the database and it's it's becoming its own PDF um, that is just, you know, just as if you just copied it on the copier. So it's not attached anymore to the database, no more logins or authentications needed. It's just gonna be a standalone PDF. If I do uh, wanna see the citation information about anything, about any resources that I happen to be in when I'm at the reading level, these tools are all the same. And here, right here, if I hover over, this basically is your site. So it might be kind of small on your, on the um, screen for you, but actually, I'm sorry, here, this one, that one's the site. So anytime I open, anytime I click on any of these, they're usually like an open or a close. So if I say, oh, I didn't mean to click that side, I can just close it again and it closes up. It comes on top of the resource. And I can see here that there's lots of different formats of citation. Most likely you're gonna be using the APA or possibly the MLA versions of citations, but there's also Chicago um, and additional resources if you do want to use those citation formats. Um, other, another kind of little, little uh, lanyap, I'd say, down here from New Orleans. So just something extra. If you do click on this APA 7th edition, it's just a, it's a, a little cheat sheet right into the style guide. So it tells you the edition of it. And then it gives the user examples and patterns of how then they should be uh, citing these other, these different types of resources. So if they want to do a review here, I can also print this off, you know, and just stick it in my um, backpack or something. And it's a real quick way for me to just review my, my citation codes. And how I got there again was I just clicked on the site when I'm reading any article. And then I actually just followed the hot link uh, for, through any of these uh, citation formats. I can get that same information. Um, along with the citation, um, there's also some sharing tools here. The one thing you want to remember in uh, when you're using uh, like authenticated resources is you pro you never probably want to use this URL up here. Uh, this is a session URL and it will not work after about 15 minutes. So if you're going to sh be sharing URLs, you want to share a link going into this resource, uh, maybe in your classroom environment or you need to share it with another faculty member, you can go ahead and use the permalink here. It's a little bit of, usually a little bit of a better, um, you know, pathway to get to the resource. Uh, so, but test that out too before you share it, okay? If anyone noticed over here on the side, I am in the July 2019 version of this journal, um, but I also can look at forward issues and back issues. So if you do find one of your, you know, a journal in here that you would like to kind of browse through, uh, then you can do that here just by looking at choose another issue. And then maybe I want to come forward, you know, and look at whether there are issues there are and then browse through by walking through um, the article titles here. I'm going to go back to the result list. Megan will let me know if there's any specific questions about anything that we've been looking at. So over here, these are great to use. I would say the subject highly underused. Um, remember to pull that, open that subject area up and use that as a filter um, when you're using your simple term here, then this gets you kind of thinking a little bit more um, in detail and starts to narrow your resources. 
Okay, so we looked at the filters. Uh, let's do some uh, different types of searching here. So remember I said, look at here, like, oh, you know, this is giving me a lot of resources, 394 resources. There's this really quick way that you can see what's been published in the last 90 days, in the last 120 days. Uh, any kind of any number that you want to choose as as far as days go up to 999 days. Um, so if I don't want to just, if, you know, let's just say, well, we're already into March or into April of 2021. Um, I just want to know what's been published in the last three months or what's been published in the last 90 days. So there's this code you can do. I'm going to leave this here sustainable fashion. And this is super easy. It's just capital D, capital T for date. So you do capital D, capital T space. And then I'm just going to put 90 days. I want to know what's been published on sustainable fashion in the last 90 days, period, the end. So I can do that. And it quickly filters down to let me know that I have all these, I have 21 resources then that are very, very new. So when we're talking about a hot topic, um, something that's being newly written about, newly researched and then published, you, you know, this is gonna be your friend, that date limiter. And it's so easy and quick and it's just capital D, capital T space. And again, as long, if I did, I can do 999, that still looks at as a day, like days format. So that's 999 days, what's been published. But as soon as I do 2000, or, you know, then it's actually looking at it as the actual year. So then it's saying, ooh, what was published on sustainable fashion in the year of 2000. So that's how that works. Ask any questions if you have them. Um, some of your databases do have kind of unique filters. And one of them I wanted to show you was this cover story and kind of talk about that. So let me do a new search to clear all this out. And keeping my search simple, I'm just gonna search keyword of robots. So I'm gonna have a lot of different subjects here and just moving down, I see that I have um, something from wireless personal communications. Here's the International Journal of Computers. Uh, I have technology and applied science research, journal of robotics, uh, and then I can continue to, continue to go down and see some other, re, you know, a lot of other journals that have something to do or, you know, that have some articles to do with robots. If I choose the filter here of cover story, um, what I'm doing is I'm saying, you know what, I want to know what, and usually this would be more for the uh, popular reading materials. Think about like your, um, mechanical engineering magazine, or let's see what other way we have MIT uh, technology review now, management today, hotel business. So any anytime you have a cover story focusing on your topic, you're most likely going to have, it's going to be a longer article. It's going to be the main, you know, it's, it's going to be, uh, have a lot of pictures, graphs, things like that. So it's kind of a cool way if you do have that within this database or you know within the databases that you're searching, it's kind of rare that you have this, but if you do have it, give it a try like you do here. And then it's kind of nice to go ahead and see, I can go in here and then view the resource here, um, possibly use some of the you know, pictures or graphs or charts within my research. So let's go ahead and look. Well, I'll just jump on here. This happens to be popular electronics. Uh, let me see. I always kind of get choosy here when I start to click in. I'll try this one here. So this works the same way. I have those same uh, resources there. Let me go back. I think my internet's a little slow for loading it. And there's one thing that I was kind of stopped on and I want to show you. So this one, let's stay on this one. Um, so if I do see that I have a choice between the HTML and PDF, why would I choose one over the other? Well, the HTML is has two re, two items in there that are maybe useful for you and and those two things are be the ability to translate 
the article um, into, I believe it's now 36 languages. So if you do have uh, ESL students or if a student would prefer to read it in their native language, um, then they can do that here with any HTML article that they see. Also, if you have sight impaired students or if you have just those reluctant readers, uh, they the item will actually be, be read to you too. You can download, there's some other features here where you can download it into an MP3 uh, format and so on. So the HTML version of the articles will, will always have all of the text within there. And sometimes it will include um, some of the pictures and the graphs and the charts. A lot of the times that's kind of what you're missing. This one does happen to include it. There's some pictures and charts, um, but the other, a lot of them, it's really just kind of text only. You can see you have the same tools here, the sharing tools and the saving tools. Is anyone using an EBSCO folder? No. So EBSCO folders are is, is a similar to your Google Drive. It's basically just uh, something that you're saving to the cloud. So you're always able to create your folder if you sign in. Uh, and if you don't already have one, you can easily just create one. And then as you're doing research or as you're saving things uh, for your you know, teaching assignments or to share with your students, then you can uh, you know, always save them and then pull them back out when you need them. So it's a great resource for you to know about if and when you do want to save items for the future. Okay, make an account and then go ahead and start adding things to the uh, folder. Okay, I have one more thing to show you and then I think we'll be done uh, or we'll be ready for questions too. So I've been searching at the article level. I've done some, some, just some keywords here. The articles come up. I'm able to then, you know, manipulate and maneuver and then get down to the resources that I need. Let me show you one other way that you can search here. So if I just want to see, well, what types of publications uh, for my subject are in this resource? So I, what I want to do is I want to just look at uh, the journals that are in here, the magazines. So if I go over here to this publication search, it's the first thing I wanna do. And if I put something in the box, I'm still just searching at the article level in this box. I wanna go down below under the publications wording and I wanna actually then do a real search within the publications. And I'm what I like to do is I like to do a subject search. I might think that I know the exact name of my journal. And if you do, go ahead and put it in there. Um, but let's just, I just want to, I kind of want to open, expand my horizons and see, well, what resources are in here covering, um, you know, my subject. So I'm going to change it to subject first, and then I'm going to put my keywords in here. And my keyword today is going to be just law enforcement. So I'm just using law enforcement, and I'm looking at what titles are in this system about my topic. I want to do browse. And then I'll show, so now, you know, this is, this is then showing me the journals and different pieces of uh, trade journals and, and magazines and things that are in here that are covering my topic. But let me show you how to read this then. So I see the title here, Kentucky Law Enforcement Magazine. Um, I see that, you know, even if it says bib records, I'm really going to kind of just ignore that. I don't really care about that. What I care about is, is there full text? And when, you know, is there current full text? So if you see something that says to present, that means that the latest version of the Kentucky Law Enforcement Magazine is in here. What I want to do is, and, I, and this catches my, I'm like, ooh, the FBI Law Enforcement Bulletin. I also have the Journal of Current Issues. Um, when I see to present and when I see that it's in PDF, that's kind of my goal, you know, or my platinum right there. I'm like, ooh, this is there. It's you know, going to be the latest information and I'm going to have those PDF uh, items to then read. So I can look here, I have Blue Line Magazine and Sheriff Magazine, um, Women Police. If I do see anything that has a stop date like this, it basically says Forensic Science Forum to, you know, from 2011 <coughs> to 2016. 
that basically means that um, it's either no longer being published, you're still able to search, you know, within that time period and find articles that were written within that time period, but it's not going to be anything newer in here for this journal, you know, beyond the uh, July yeah. date. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do this search here. And so I'm saying, well, this is what I want to search. I want to look within the FBI law enforcement bulletin. And then I have this specific search I want to look for. So if I just grab it there, this shows me the holdings. Uh, so I have, you know, a lot of backdated information here back into the 90s. And I have the latest information here. But right here is where uh, is what I want to do. Search within the publication. So I'm now just going to be searching one journal for my topic. So it kind of sets up the search here. And all I need to do is go down into that second box and then put my topic in. And I want to know um, what's being written about mental health in this journal. And these are just my keywords that I came up with. I'm going to do a search here. It's going to stay, it's going to stick with that one journal. And so here it kind of shows you, this is your search. It looked at, it looked in the journal of law enforcement, FBI law enforcement bulletin, and then it used the keywords of mental health. And I have 37 articles that have something to do then with um, that topic within that specific journal. Okay, so I think I wanna just go ahead and open it up for any questions or also if there's anyone in here uh, where we haven't kind of done any searches within your subject area, if you do want to do any sample searches just to kind of see what types of items are gonna be in here for you, I can do that too. Great, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, we do have one request in the chat that says, please demonstrate how to save an HTML to an MP3 file. Okay, I can do that. Uh, let's see, I haven't done that in a while, but let's go ahead and jump into just this one. We already know we're in the law enforcement bulletin and any HTML should have that option. Um, so there's my listen. And then let's see here. Used to be, I'm going to stop it for a minute, but let's see if here. So I can change the accent there. Um, it used to be, this actually has changed. Let me see here, right here. It's probably gonna be it, right? So download here. And then you're just gonna agree and download the file. And then it's going to save on your uh, desktop, you know, wherever you put it. Um, but so what I did, I was all kind of, all kind of there it comes up, it wants to save. But let me go back again and let me X this out and just kind of show you. So it does kind of look like, oh, all I can do is listen. But what I did is I guess when you hover over, it does kind of show you that expanded and then different items. And I used to always tease too and say, if you wanted to, you could listen to it an Australian or British accent. <laughs> I actually didn't know about that feature. That's fantastic. Um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself. I'm also going to share a feedback link in the chat right now. We'd love to hear uh, from everyone who attended today what you thought of today's session. Um, as a reminder, for attending, you will receive a certificate of attendance, and the recording will be shared with all registrants and posted on our YouTube at the end of the day. Um, we will also give a chance to ask questions unrecorded, so if you prefer that, please hold on to them for a few more minutes, but I just wanted to give a chance for anyone else who might have any questions and doesn't mind being recorded to ask them right now. Okay, I'm not seeing any coming in, so I'm going to say thank you, and I will stop the recording right now. <laughs>